Hello world, what's going on? Hi, it's your boy, it's Jeremy Alexander Newsome with Real Life Trading, who's doing absolutely fantastic. It's Friday, which theoretically means the trading week is over. Tomorrow is Saturday. So enjoy your weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you have a great weekend planned. Talk about the SPY today. I had a good buddy Dan email me, say, hey man, not much has happened out there. I agree. Uh, I was a little, yesterday, uh, a little bearish since we closed below the low of Wednesday's candle, which was so bullish. Beautiful volume, great gap action. Beautiful gap right here. And the fact that's closing, I was like, ah, uh, let's watch this. So I was definitely watching SPY all day today using the red markers because uh, I did have a red day down right at 3R on the day today which kind of sucks, but you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you have losing trades. Every life trading, we're one of the few companies that actually talks about the losers. Uh, most of the time, you'll just hear only about the winners, but that's real life. You're gonna have losers and you're gonna have winners. As long as you lose less money than you make mathematically, you'll be profitable. So next week, it's gonna hit it again. Uh, SPY did not really do very much. So this is gonna go in line very closely with my theory that we're not going to get something like this. At this point, I'm very confident on that. Uh, I think we're just gonna do something like this, and the moving averages are just gonna catch up just like we did back in late January, early February, where we just kinda trade sideways, and that's the rest that we get. Here's the Dow ETF, the Dow Jones ETF, also not much going on there. Here's the Qs, not much going on there, a little bit more bullish overall, and then here's the IWM. IWM, nice little high wave candle. Have a lot of traders and some bull put spreads though, which that's exciting. And uh, hopefully those expire worthless. So far, they look good. Uh, so let's see what else we're gonna be talking about today. Had a lot of requests today, so let's get to it. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about Snapchat. So I uh, did the IPO review just, just hours ago recently. And this is textbook, ladies and gentlemen. This is very, very key to exactly what I was talking about in uh, in the review is that most tech IPOs, right? They're gonna start off and they're gonna run a little bit. It's exactly what I mentioned in the video because you can't short them. Um, people who bought them previous, you know, companies, owners, employees, they're in the lockup period so they can't sell. And uh, you, since you can't short, the only people who can sell are the people who bought pre-IPO um, at $17. And again, a lot of people are like, oh man, IPO'd at 17 and look, it's up 25%. It's like. The only way you could have gotten it at 17 is like I mentioned in the video, you have to call your broker and buy a lot. So you can't just call your broker and be like, hey, can I have 10 shares? Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily work that way. It could if you're lucky, if you have a good relationship with a broker or with someone who you worked with in the past, but it's, it's not that easy uh, to just get into an IPO before it actually opened. So when it opened, when it hit the New York Stock Exchange, it was trading already at $24. Now granted, it's up $3 since then, so over 10% in two days, but that's, I mean, classic IPO kind of uh, fever, right? Just opens, runs, moves, that type of thing. Now, today's gap was a good opportunity for day trading. So the day traders, Rob Cole crushed it today. Congratulations, Rob, my buddy from California, making over 8R on Snapchat. Zane, my buddy in Denver, made over 2R. So a lot of traders just wrecked the day trade opportunity. Uh, this is the hourly chart on Snapchat. You'll notice on the hourly, black candles on the hourly gapping up, right? So it was trapping some people. Uh, so here's the five minute chart. And on the five minute chart, it was a retest gap on the daily. So the setup that we drew live in the trading room was entry here, stop right about there. If you're playing it, that's how you would. And that was the run up. So that was Snapchat. You definitely could have day traded it bullish today. Other than that, that was pretty much the only main opportunity. You only have two days left on it. Uh, I'm gonna come up with an exact wager, but I think something like this is gonna be happening on Snapchat uh, in the next few weeks. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to for sure, but we can see absolutely there's some upper shadows coming in. So there are people selling, and those are the people who just simply bought. Uh, people buying, selling, buying, selling, that type of thing. Now. On Monday, if we gap above the high of today, just like we did uh, today, this morning, let's look to day trade bullish, right? For my day traders out there. Most of the traders who are trading IPOs don't know how to mitigate risk, don't know how to position their size accordingly. And that's why I'm saying, hey, just be cautious, just be careful, be patient. There's only two candles on the screen. There's no moving averages. 
Um, Snapchat looks very, very similar to a lot of other ones. Since we're just talking about it, let me just go back in time and show you what Google did. Um, Google, people are comparing uh, Snap and Google, uh, which is, that's fine, that's fair. <laughs> if you wanna compare the two. So let me zoom back all the way to 2004 when Google IPO'd and just kind of show you on the daily chart exactly what happened on this thing. Because yes, Google when it IPO'd, um, it ran up nicely for about two or three days. So here's the IPO on Google, right? It opened, traded higher, trade higher. So for three days, it just had a nice move and then it did pull back, giving people a good opportunity. And based on just the candlestick pattern, you can see it trade down to the low. You got this nice little consolidation. Volume started coming in right there. Volume started increasing. And then that was that, right? Started breaking out. So sure, Snapchat could do that. I'm not saying it's gonna to go to zero. I personally think it's gonna be a little bit bearish overall, but uh, you know, we will see. There's a lot of IPOs. Um, I think it's a better to compare it with. Twitter is probably one of them. Uh, so here's Twitter, and if you wanna look at Twitter's IPO, when it came out actually on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, way back when, somewhat similar, but Twitter started tanking immediately and then bounced, and then people realized it didn't actually make money, and then it actually tanked. So, you know, we'll see. Maybe uh, I think Snapchat again does this, runs higher, runs lower, and then runs higher, which is uh, somewhat similar to what Facebook and Ferrari did. Um, let's go look at a few other stocks. Here's CHK, and a lot of people keeping their eyes on CHK, which I dig. Uh, here's what I'm looking for specifically on the weekly chart. So Lita, I don't know if your bull put spread expired, but if it did, congratulations. I know she had one. There's a lot of bearish candles in a row on a weekly chart. A lot of people are saying maybe this is a double top. I don't think it's a double top. What I will say is I'm looking at getting long around five bucks. It is coming into a buy low sell high territory and I'm watching it very, very closely to see if it's going to bounce. Personally, I think it's gonna breach this little support a lot of bears hop on and then some bulls come in because at that point it's already made its move, right? It's gone, uh, gone down almost 50%, uh, 35 and a half from $8 down to $5. I mean, that's three points, right? So the bears have already had fun with CHK and now I'm, I definitely keep an eye on CHK for a bullish opportunity um, around five bucks uh, with shares more than likely. GoPro is the next stock that was requested. GoPro, talking about IPOs, um, also probably is gonna be a very, very similar to Snapchat. I mean, look at GoPro, right? Big white candle the first day, second day it opened up, and then you got that pullback, and then you got the bounce. I mean, Snapchat's gonna either go lower within the next two weeks, or it's gonna do exactly what GoPro did. And you know what's gonna happen? All of your buddies from high school are gonna start calling you, and they're gonna tell you, oh man, you should start buying Snapchat right now. You're gonna hear Kramer talk about it. It's gonna be all over the news, and this is where everyone's gonna start buying. Same place they bought GoPro. <laughs> Late 2014, uh, at $95 a share, I think it was gonna to go to 100, and then it just goes to, you know, goes down the toilet. So. Just be cautious, right? Buy low, sell high. Always keep that mentality, especially when you're trading an IPO. Buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. Make sure you mitigate your risk. If it's just tearing to the moon, right? You don't know how to trade it, zoom into the hourly charts. Watch the hourly charts and see if you can play it on the hourly. Um, and because the, the daily is gonna give you just, you know, the daily will give you some information, but the hourly just gives you such so much information so much more quickly. Uh, anyway, so GoPro is at a buy low, sell high location. We've been keeping an eye on GoPro to bounce off of the support. You'll notice at 977 how to trigger quick bull play. Well, hasn't broken above that point yet. We closed today at $8.44. Uh, so this is a great support on GoPro, no denying that. But if this support breaks on GoPro, huge chance it goes lower. And then from there, you'll start hearing rumors circulate about buyout, who's going to be acquiring GoPro, bankruptcy, things like that. Um, I have one analyst on YouTube, I'm not going to mention any names. But, uh, <laughs> he's been buying GoPro pretty heavy for the last few weeks and months. And man, I just hope the stock goes to zero. Uh, he's just... He's a great character. Uh, anyway, it is not anyone you guys think it is. It's someone, anyway, whatever. GoPro. <laughs> so GoPro, uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's gonna go zero for sure. I'm gonna watch it. It's definitely in the support zone. So if we get something like this, and we get a candle with volume, one white soldier, some type of gap, sure. Let's see if we can go long on it. Uh, but otherwise, if it starts breaking down, 
Uh, you can either go bearish or just do absolutely nothing on GoPro. But I will say personally, I have no position on GoPro at all. Here's HPE, Hewlett Packard, and I had a trader ask me, is this gap going to fill? So really quick, here's the weekly chart, Hewlett Packard, HPQ had a little bit of a spinoff on HPE recently, and here's your support resistance. So this resistance right here, beautiful, nice breakout, easy retest, and then you got this support resistance right there. So yes, we are at a support on HPE. Uh, here's back to the daily chart, and the daily chart, you had a nice gap down, black candle gapping down. So it is a retest gap. I think this is a pretty easy um, support resistance. I think this is a pretty easy bracket trade. So if you're looking at bracket trading this beast, uh, entry would be above the high of these candles, stop would be the low of those candles, and vice versa. If you want to trade it bearish, trade it with a breakdown with a stop above those candles. So that's how you could trade HPE, either bullish or bearish. Nice three candle pattern, nice little flag. Look forward to break either direction. Grubhub, yummy to my tummy. We were watching it all day, looking at trading it bearish, never got the signal. In fact, right before I went on a lunch break, um, this was what I was looking for. I wanted that support to break down with a stop right there. That was how I was looking at trading it, just never triggered. So no big deal. I always like when things don't trigger. Uh, and Grubhub on the daily chart. Let me come back to a weekly. Um, Weekly looks a little double topish. I'm gonna to have to agree. This was an IPO that no one really talked about, no one really cared about, and rightfully so. I don't. I think Grubhub and Groupon are very, very similar, uh, which Groupon didn't do very good either. So Grubhub, a little bit of a double top right here. Probably gonna retest the neckline next week or the week after, and then likely trade lower into 30ish, and then from there potentially balanced. But overall, it's definitely in a big channel uh, between these prices of 31 and 44, buy the dip, buy low, sell high type of thing. Uh, but if you're looking at playing Grubhub, I would keep a little bit of a bearish tint to your analysis. Just look for a retest because you've already had a bunch of selling in a row, five weeks in a row, right? You don't wanna be the guy or the girl who shorts right there to only get stopped out right there to see this happen, right? You see a bunch of bearish trades come in, Wait for this, then short, then let the trade roll over in your favor, right? Buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. What? That's Grubhub. Here's Caterpillar. Shout outs to some traders on Caterpillar. Man, I feel good about this one. So yesterday, Caterpillar had some IRS stuff going on in one of its branches in Illinois. And uh, I don't know, it was selling off hard. Uh, this is the biggest selling day that it had in eight months, according to Wall Street Journal. And yesterday, there was a lot of premium and some put sales. So Dean, myself, and a few others sold some puts expiring to, uh, today, sold them yesterday. So made about 1% on Caterpillar just by recognizing that it was trading into a support zone. So Dean, congratulations, man. Well done. We also are still in a 91.90 bull put spread on Caterpillar. Looking forward to bounce off the 100 simple. Matthew's in a bear call spread. So we're going to watch Cat. Definitely a bearish day for sure. But what you have to realize is, even though fundamentally some people are like, oh, what's going to happen on Caterpillar? Support resistance, right? Buy low so high, the channel still going higher. Um, so I'm looking to buy the dip. And uh, one of my mentors is doing the, looking to do the same thing. So uh, that's Anne-Marie, by the way. Uh, Long-term moving averages look good on a daily. Here's your weekly. Nice high wave candle. So I really don't know exactly what to do on Caterpillar uh, directionally on a long-term level. But short-term, play the hourly, buy the bounce, sell, buy low, sell high, or do it non-directionally with some kind of option trading. Here's another request. A-J-R-D. What is this? Uh, oh, yeah. Aerojet. Rocketdyne. That sounds like a fake company. <laughs> It sounds like a company that you would make on Nickelodeon. So Aerojet Rocketdyne, uh, this is the weekly chart. Pulling up the weekly only because I don't look at the stock um, really ever. So looking at this, you have a big resistance back from 2004, randomly, uh, here at about $21. So that's a big, a big resistance, and you can see that actually acted as a great resistance just recently. So if I were to draw a line, it would look like this. Coming back into the daily chart, Looks like a nice breakout. Looks like a very healthy bullish gap and go. Uh, the moving averages are all bullish. Volume is bullish. Everything looks good for the bulls. 
So I would simply say if you're looking at playing Aerojet Rocketdyne, I would uh, buy the dip as it pulls back into about $20.73. Look to snag it as it's pulling back. Place your stop probably around $19.69 and uh, hope she pops. Monster Beverages. Monster had a pretty scary gap the other day. White candle gapping up. So check this out. It was a retest gap. Shocking how we uh, hit the 100, 200 simple and then pulled back a little bit. Um, so Monster is going to be very interesting uh, from here. Great gap. It's battling the 200 simple. Here's the weekly chart. And the weekly chart looks like a giant double bottom. Now, I think there's been a time where we've seen this before, but I just can't remember exactly when Monster's done this before. So what I would say is it looks a little bit like a double bottom, huge candle. The 100 simple on a weekly is at 46.97 and we're battling the 200. So watch Monster to be bullish. I like the volume coming in. I would just say let it continue battling the daily moving average um, right here. Let it break above that, right? Break above and then do what? Buy the dip, buy the retest. Why? This is a retest gap. That's pretty much why. That's Monster, good direction, good edge, looks overall more bullish to me. Uh, next on the list was Intel, and I'm mostly looking at this one for my boy, Brian Sharkey. Brian, your cover call expired worthless. Congratulations, buddy. Looks like you can do it one more again. Matthew's in a 36, 35, 50 bull put spread with 30 days left. He's looking good on that one. C drill, looks like C drill's going to zero, down 25% today. Uh, we mentioned it was going to zero about a dollar. Uh, what was it today? $1.53. Guys, big, big deal. When it closed above that level, I was like, if you want to go bullish here, feel free to. Just make sure your stops are around this area somewhere or be willing to risk all the way to zero with your risk mitigation tools, right? $2.11 of risk. Calculate your R based on that. Fact of the matter is, we closed at a bullish entry. We've broken lower. This thing is going the way of Sun Edison. Be very careful if you own shares of C-Drill. I do not think it's coming back from here. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, that C-Drill, all-time low, getting beat up real bad. Uh, does that mean it's a great time to short it? Well, if you can find shares available to short, if it pulls back a little bit, sure. If you want to short it, feel free to. That's totally your call. But C-Drill getting beat up in a big, big way. And this is a stock that I've tried getting in and out of numerous times on a long-term position. If you go back to 2015, and again, I do admit when I'm wrong, um, back in 2015, I liked C-Drill bullish around $10 and started picking some up here, here, did some covered calls, yada, 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 lost when, when it broke that support, tried again here, lost, and then we waited. I was like, well, shoot, if it's just going to keep doing this, and I would love to say that I bought there, didn't. Uh, tried a short-term swing trade there, made a little bit of money back, but then tried one more time right here for a very small R, right? So bigger R, smaller, smaller, even smaller, even smaller. It's not going to work. So C-Drill, bye-bye. Go in the way of VRX, GNC, and the Dodo Bird. Oh, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's it for me on Friday. You know my email address, jeremy at .com. We're the only company in the world teaching this stuff for free. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back Monday. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.